The following podcast is protected under the laws of the United States and other countries. Any unauthorized distribution or duplication may result in civil liability, pr- criminal prosecution, or the wrath of the tall man. And this is 90 for Chill, the podcast with Cat Bus Russ. This is your host, Cat Bus Russ. And I've just uh, had a longer day, I think, than I expected. It was a uh, trip over to Peoria to see my first ever QuadCon. I know in February they are going to be having one in Champaign. So I discovered that, of course, after I saw the Peoria information. And hopefully Ava covering up her poop in her litter box is not that distracting. Trying to record this before the air conditioner kicks back on again. So short, short episode today, needless to say. So let's get a little more formalities out of the way if you want to get an idea of what I'm prepping for the podcast, you can follow me on Letterboxd. The username there is CM Darth. That's C as in cool, M as in movie, Darth as in the Sith Lord. And who knows, now that I'm going to be throwing on my Chris Hardwick uh, bump from the ID10T podcast ahead of episodes, maybe the uh, cool movie Darth will catch on again. You know. It, it, I love being called the cat bus, though. What can I say? So the AC is kicking on. Just bear with me as I keep chattering. Just because, again, after my previous episode with Sam Marsh, it's important to just keep the air busy. And since I'm recording this on the Spotify for Podcasters app, I really don't want to go and have to edit too much. So sorry if it sounds a little half arsed. Um, but, you know, it gives me a lot more time to figure out what I'll do with the podcast. Uh, as I say, I'm working on covering up my uh, features that I would say oh, are just part of Ali's Accessory Shop on Etsy's Trash Features Review. I know I'm very behind when it comes to getting all 27 of those out of the way. I'm only up to H, technically. I've watched H, I, J, and K. So... It's com- it's coming, and next week um, weekend I got the tournament of champions for what do you know trivia, team shrug emoji if you're spectators out there, and so basically I've got one day to record before I'd like to drop my next regular live episode, and then when I mean live I mean episode with the guests, so that's uh, I think I'll bump that up and you know catch up accordingly. And have everything straight, I hope. So, needless to say, enough of the introductions and stuff. It was a kind of a crazy day. Uh, so yesterday, after I got off my second shift job, I did not have to work my primary job, so that was nice. I drove straight home to Morton, where I visited with my folks, got my laundry done, and... You know, watched, I think, three hours of YouTube videos. I didn't get to bed till three when my older sister, the poetic critic, decided that, yeah, we better get rested up for the show, uh, the con. And when I got up that uh, morning, when I woke up, it was because my older sister was saying, oh, yeah, the uh, water's kind of backing up in the uh, toilet in her basement. And this is like the third or fourth flood for my parents. In their uh, new house they picked up in 2020. Uh, You know, my mom's got her own theories. I'm thinking, or at least was hoping it was a pipe, just so we know it's going to be all covered by insurance. Dad assures us that. But I digress. A lot of it was just mom getting on her uh, high horse about, all right, I got to get rid of all your collectibles and such. So I don't know what's going to happen to a box of... Star Wars toys, we're talking circa 99, of course. The um, Basically, I bought as much Phantom Menace action figures as I could. So, I know those aren't really that worth that much because I was at QuadCon. <laughs> so, let to say I had to go and make sure my guitar got out of the uh, basement because she was just saying, that's going to Goodwill. Sorry to deprive my brother-in-law of a 1996 PV Raptor. Uh, That my little brother's kind of... So, the story of the guitar is my little brother wanted to be a bass player. I wanted to learn how to play guitar. Uh, I found out quickly my hands are a little too short, too small for the uh, fretboard. 
meaning uh, getting a proper G was not going to happen for me there. I promise you, ladies, I can handle the proper G now. All right, enough innuendo. Let's, but I gotta make this at least PG thirteen, I suppose. So, uh, I took that guitar and kind of threw out the uh, carrying case it was in because that was just worn, and a lint roller was not gonna take off all the, you know, webs and such on that. So, but it otherwise is in pretty good shape. I just gotta wipe it down, get a new G string for it. Uh, you know, amps I can figure. It. It, it's definitely going to be worth... It's definitely worth more than a Goodwill trip. So, as for my Star Wars ties, I don't know. Because, um, you know, that was... Uh, I think the Star Wars toys nearly got me out of my anime collecting. Because, you know, at that point, they were $8 a toy, I think. So, you know, pick up two or three of those. That's one VHS tape. So, so... Yeah, so, you know, try to walk walk carefully around Mom in her mood, but do my best to help out there, you know. Move a larger space heater than the around for him. So, it was good to be there to help him out, at least. So, but got to QuadCon, and, uh, I mean, it was fun enough. Uh, it really was just a uh, toy and collectible show. So they had some pretty solid vendors like uh, Central Illinois uh, Funko Mafia, I think is what they called themselves, had quite a selection. And then there's uh, other shops that I really was just resisting buying Funkos from. I've got them bookmarked in my uh, Google Chrome, uh, my uh, Chrome. So, you know, I'll check it out if I really want that uh, $20 Jubilee X-Men 97 or the uh, 30 year anniversary of Harley Quinn Funkos resisted buying a um, Galaxy of the Gu Guardians of the Galaxy 2 Funko with Groot and the Detonator. So, you know, it's fun. It's definitely a fun pop when you can reference that to your older sister who really is just constantly going on about wanting the demise of the superhero movie. Uh, that's the biggest problem and it will get to it will get to more of her movie thoughts but um yeah i didn't really talk to too many of the celebrities there was acme comics the original drunken zombie guys and they were boofed next to um lord Br blood raw who uh would do at least the interstitials for the drunken zombie double features that were at the uh, peoria independent theater which soon became the just part of the landmark cinema because the uh, Jay Goldberg organization are just uh, kind of uh, cheapos, I guess. I mean, that was oh, just looking for a good indie theater, and now without the art theater, out of the buildings there, I think it's got landmark status, so you gotta do something with it. Somebody has to. So, I don't know. Maybe I should just play the Powerball. I actually have cash. Because uh, the big reason I went down to this con, because as I said, I know they pop up everywhere. And as I say, I think it's February. I'd have to go and look at a calendar. So bear with me as I pop that on my Apple Watch. So I am home back home in Champaign. I'm just a little on the tired side. Uh, you know, when I drive, I'm primarily running on sugar. And when you're a diabetic, that is not... Uh, necessarily wise or at least i don't think it would be wise so let me see august uh, september october november december so yep so i think the quad con in champaign urbana will be the 23rd and 24th if i read it right i think it's probably more likely the 24th and 25th i mean that's gonna be a tight spot i think it'll probably be at the i hotel or some maybe a conference center on the west side of town I know that they, uh, oh no, it's going to be in a hotel um, with a minimal uh, conference center space. I don't think it's the I Hotel. Um, but they don't need a lot. It was just the one room in the exhibition hall. Um, but the reason I went to the show was after recently watching uh, the Cinema Snob do an episode on Rats, a Bruno Mattei movie, uh, which I haven't really done much myself. Um, 
I have from the Drunken Zombie Double Features. I do have a copy of as a raffle of one one of the shows to where it was the uh two pack women's prison massacres. Uh, so Italian exploitation. You know, I get a hold of a lot of that stuff. I was watching Fulci movies back when it was on Netflix all the time. Good old days of Netflix. And even then I was watch and my exposure to the horror and interest in it really came from a special on Dario Argento, the and I still gotta watch his latest movie on Shudder. Um Suspiria is his best known feature. Um but Tanabre, Strange Drafts, number one uh Giallo movie, uh is another good one. But the point of the matter is I didn't really know anything about horror, horror really. It just you know, by the time I could movies I was of age to watch in the slasher genre were so formulaic. It was just more stupidity than actual suspense, dare I say. So yeah, I have always had a fascination with Italian horror. And uh, he's also done movies I've seen and uh, movies I've covered on the podcast. And I guess I've got to back up because uh, 2020 Texas Gladiators is definitely uh, was done on the alleys, accessory shop on Etsy's trash feature review. It's not a um, Bruno Mattei movie. Um, I was going to say, I haven't done any Bruno, Bruno Mattei on this, but uh, I'll get to I'll get around to all that. Um, so that was basically it. Like he was right, right at the entrance and, um, yeah, he was just really selling his book, his latest book, his first novel, dare I say, uh, the class of 1986, which is, he sells as survival, at least on YouTube as a survival guide to the apocalypse per eighties movies. And, uh, it's funny cause that just wraps it up. He was basically on the rats episode of Bruno Mate movie. He was saying he was going to be at QuadCon in Peoria. That was his next appearance. And it was just him, not the Channel Awesome folks. And honestly, I think that's a, was very was a lot more fun when it came to him. So, again, forgot my business cards for 90 for Chill, the podcast. Um, but, eh, say la vie. I uh, just mentioned. So, I get get around to him. He was across from a um, actor who's doing the cons right now to sell his art. Uh, his name is Matthew Atchley. Um, his website is art of Matt the what what eh, sorry. His website is art of Matt the uh, Info at art of much. Okay, thanks. Sorry. Now I know why I'm misreading this. All right. So his name is Matthew Atchley, actor, artist. His um, e- website is artofmatthewatchley.com. So that's A-R-T-O-F-M-A-T-T-H-E-W-A-T-C-H-L-E-Y. There we go. Uh, he's also got his social medias, which I'll be sharing on this. Oh, he's got a YouTube channel, and just under Matthew Ashley. So that'd probably be the best way of seeing him. I'm not a big pusher of the Facebook and the Instagram, of course. He does have those, though. Uh, Facebook.com slash the art of Matthew Ashley. And Instagram.com at the same, the art of Matthew Ashley. So... Uh, his he was selling uh, some great um, pencil and um, color uh, drawn um, uh, color prints of scenes for the most part from action movies. I uh, was tempted to buy one one original work I'd say, which it was just Deadpool giving you the middle finger holding the Infinity Gauntlet, which was fun. But you know, I was able to get frames right away from this gent. So. $30 in frames, $25 in prints. Um, but these are both from the pencil prints from the movie Tombstone. Um, so I think he's... I only really have prints like that from one other uh, artist. That was um, James Ferguson or Jim Ferguson. He's always at the uh, Fan Expo. And I think he's usually at... Uh, we, um, 
C2E2. Uh, my ex-girlfriend, Allie, got me one of a great watercolor of Chewie and the Porg as they fly to save the day in The Last Jedi. So, so looking for wall space there. But, so, I'm at QuadCon basically so I can buy Brad Jones' book, The Class of 1986. And, as I say, it was kind of fun to not have the rest of the pro, uh, Planet Awesome guys there. Uh, that would be Brad, um, Doug Jones, the... Uh, Doug Walker, sorry. Doug Walker is the uh, pretty much the face of Channel Awesome. He is the um, the nostalgia critic, which honestly is the first set of videos my older sister, the poetic critic, uh, got to watching. Uh, they're fun, at least the early ones are. I think he may have gotten too much in creating his own characters. But then again, you wouldn't have stuff like their series of movies like kick Asia is something I bought from them a couple of years ago. I shouldn't say a couple of years ago. I think just last year um, it was C2E2. So a couple C2E2s ago, I got it autographed um, by Doug and um, Brad. So, um, but basically this was just Brad on his own. So he had to talk to everybody on his own. And, you know, you... I'm basically waiting in a queue just for a guy to shut up, dare I say. Um, just talking about, oh, his love for angry video game nerd. Just the entire concept of YouTube videos. Uh, I did, did eventually was able to uh, pop myself into it as he's talking about uh, Brad Tries, a series on Stone Gremlin um, is his YouTube channel. And um, basically it's like, talking about trying hot sauces and I mentioned like you know the gentleman who was just taking up talking his ear off was talking about Steve-O having a new hot sauce and you know one was just hot very hot the other's extreme and I guess scorpion is the latest hot pepper and this is where I found out just saying you know what Th this is uh I should have gone on my Jurassic Park, Park rant about genetic engineering and instead of special effects in this case to find out that oh yeah no we are creating hotter and hotter peppers it's not this this stuff is not found in nature so again we are so concerned with trying to determine if we could we didn't stop and think if we should so that's how i was able to pop in and you know offer to buy his book and as he was about to sign it, he said, oh, doing only, don't, doing only cash, which I guess that's all I can really complain about is you could have a little more signage on your table and at least say only cash. I mean, I just didn't have, I don't have enough funds in my SefQ account. So yeah, I took the time to go all the way out to that ATM. So the one sitting out in the uh, lobby to both the, this, the center lobby, I guess you'd say, because it would get you into the uh, civic, the arena, the theater, and the E-Hall. Oh, I didn't really get the boast about being knocked out in the E-Hall before. <laughs> Tough Man Contest 2001. I got two invites in the Tough Man Contest, so, hey, you know, I'm going to... Can't help but appreciate my reputation there. <laughs> so, basically, oh, it's a guy who can throw a punch and won't die. Because it wasn't until seven fights into my uh, unplanned barroom boxing career that I actually got a win. And, hey, to my credit, I caught up to, I think I'm a 12 and 13 out of 25 uh, fights of uh, three one-minute rounds. So, hey. Um so yeah, I'm just on a very, like, this is what I love about the podcast is like, okay, we have something to focus on one-on-one -on -one, instead of, you know, a guy who seemingly talked, you know, I don't know. I'm not a very, again, I sit at a bar, I'm enjoying myself, having a drink, good spectator, I guess. And then, you know, oh, that's something I relate to. And boom, let's take over the room. Um so I didn't, by the time I got back, he's still talking to the same, same guy, I think wearing the, one of the fat guys from Jackass t-shirts, like, uh, just, um, but yeah, you know, I got to finally, you know, get to buy the book, um, and, uh, get to talk about 
you know, Bruno Bente movies, um, which that is something I should, I'm definitely have to watch. I think tonight, if catching up on AEW wrestling doesn't take it all up, is Bruno Mattei's Terminator 2, which is a mashup, basically, an Italian exploitation mashup of Terminator and Aliens. So, you know, who's not going to like somebody trying to rip off James Cameron? It almost makes me want to wish I could see these Avatar ripoffs like the uh, Chinese were attempting to do. So, um... Yeah, but he was a very cool guy once I got the got to talk to him. And I'm pretty brief. You know, we were talking about uh, how I've come across so many just Italian exploitation movies and talking about how... And I guess you just watch um, watch the uh, you, most recent YouTube videos on, at Stone Gremlin Productions. Uh, his reviews for... And I think he probably... I don't know if he had the time to do the... Uh, Barbie Heimer. Oh, geez. Mom was watching a Fox News Saturday night. And they, of course, they were just doing their best to lampoon anything, um, li- you know, anything liberal, mainstream. Not liberal, mainstream, just to show us that, no, you're in the right place. Stay with this cult. And, like, mom's laughing at it. And it's like, they're not funny jokes. You're you're just liking the chance to laugh at other people. Great. So uh, hopefully mom doesn't listen to this one. So let's not pitch the idea of my parents just sponsoring this to get me some ad time somewhere, somewhat. Um, I, I did have a, an experience at um, my primary retail job. You know, can know what it is if you listen to enough episodes. If you've been listening long enough, I should say. Because I'm pretty good about covering up where I work. Um, had a woman, a couple come up to check out, just gets a, a charger and a cord. And the woman of the couple asked, do you need 4k to stream? And I said, no, 4k is a resolution. You don't need, that has nothing to do with streaming. So I can stream Fox nation on my TV. Uh, provided your television has streaming. It does not. Then you need a Roku, a fire stick, a... Apple TV. Um, Chrome is pretty good. I'm not, I don't want to put them last. I, I prefer Google over Amazon whenever I can. Um, and she's, of course, her response was, well, that's what I asked. And, of course, no, you didn't ask that. You asked about... Um, you asked if 4K had anything to do with streaming, which I told you it did not. You could have just told me, what do I need to stream... I could have given you an answer instead of you wanting to be smarter than me to watch a bullshit channel. Like, geesh. It's not. And and those freaks. There we go. Um, You know, you watch their commercials. This is the channel for real Americans. Well, yeah, no. Um, That's total bullshit. You're a bunch of freaking traitors. And you're looking for people to sell your message to that America is for people as primitive as the founding fathers. And yeah, founding fathers, like I saw somebody walking around in a t-shirt and of course it was my liquor store job. So, hey, I can't judge people there. Definitely will judge people at my other retailer, but, you know, wearing your shirt, say, with... George Washington holding an AR-15 and George Washington says own an AR-15 everybody should own an AR-15 probably and it's like yeah George Washington would tell you to own slaves too I mean the constitution is a brilliant document which is meant to be modified and which means anything that says one language one religion is not cannot be included in it. I mean, I suppose if we do go total fascist, you can change it that way. But just you know, we're not there yet, thankfully. So, um, so sorry all my rants. I guess I could transition that back in. You know, talking about Tubi, which is an awesome service. 
which you can watch all these movies because that's primarily where uh, Brad was saying he was watching these recent Bruno Mattei's uh, and Slaughter High, which I guess he would say, like, as he wrote or was doing his most recent edits on Class of 1986, is that, oh, yeah, if you like those reviews, you're going to like the book because that's pretty much what I think this movie, this novel is. Um, it's a, and I'm flipping through it, and, um, it's a, um, about 300 pages, a little less, um, but it's fairly well spaced, I think double spaced, so it's gonna be, uh, fills up a lot of paper, and that's not a bad thing, because he's a cinema guy, I'm a cinema guy, you know, a page a minute rule, I think, applies for both of us, so, nice and easy, sounds fun. Um, and when he autographs the, the, this current set of books he has and he's autographing, he has noticed typos still in the book. So he's calling it the Bruce edition. So, um, yeah, it was a, so I got that autograph. So very cool guy. And then, you know, the next person talks his ear off, which is like, I just, you know, I don't like, there's. I mean, it's just one of those, like, yeah, I guess the guy who wants to stay busy, especially in Peoria, where the biggest star there is the guy who played the kid who played Boba Fett in Attack of the Clones. <laughs> um, the cosplay wasn't wasn't too much um, at this. It's As I say, it's primarily a toy con, which, you know get home my older sister describes that to my mom and it's like i don't want to hear about toys after all the stuff she's moved to get you know for the uh people to handle the cleaning of the apart of the uh, basement so uh like it's i have space i can bring them all in it's really again there's just so much dust and sit in the attic and such it's like fortunately a lot of the toys are but yeah I shouldn't really be bitching. I've got a uh, air compressed air duster here, so I could fix all that. It's not like the guitar case, which was fabric, and then all of that stuff gets weaved into the uh, weaved nature of it. So, uh, so then I went. Uh, so he's as I said, he's across from Matthew Ashley. Um, I go and look through the rest of this rest of the show. Uh, and then uh, go back to Matthew Ashley to buy stuff. Support your actors. The, this is the type of gentleman who um, the actor strike is all about. The people are just trying to make a living at it. Not the stars, the actor, you know, the extras, the people who, who t- put everything on the line and, uh, you know, get, take what role they can. So you got to respect that. And with that said... We got to get these um, guys off the lines. And my older sister was discussing. Uh, she's getting a lot more use out of Twitter than I am. I've, I've really, this past week, I've just so much screwed up. Thank you, Elon Musk. Uh, with that said, I'm on Mastodon, ru- at Russ Stevens, at Mastodon.social. Um, that's where I met Sam Wash. Uh, Sam, eh. Sam Marsh from the Men in Black episode last week. Good gent. And, um, you know, at least I know the feed is doing what it's supposed to. Give me the new stuff. Don't just throw it here and there. Very resistant to thread still. Um, as I said, it was very resistant to give Mr. Atchley's uh, Zuckerberg-related accounts. Um, so... Got went to him after I finished up and found these uh, prints he did uh, from related to Tombstone. I got them in pencil. Um, one is the four walking um, from left to right. Val Kilmer's uh, Doc Holliday, Sam Elliott's um, which Earp was he? Well, the uh, old oldest Earp brother, 
Kent, uh, Kurt Russell's Wyatt and Bill Paxton's Morgan, Virgil, Virgil, uh, Earp. And, um, he said he actually ended up drawing this one, um, uh, for, um, Bill Paxton before he passed. So that's kind of cool. And the, uh, other, so I've done an episode on Sam Elliott and, you know, Bill Paxton's still an option. Plenty of stuff to draw from. You know, done a lot of his movies just because he's in everything from the 80s. But I digress. And then he also drew uh, one for Michael Bean of uh, Johnny Ringo holding a gun. I don't necessarily know it's, if it's as accurate to the uh, to the background, I should say. But yeah, so it's uh, Michael Bean as Johnny Ringo. So... Yeah, that's a pretty um pretty solid. As I say, I got those two prints for twenty five dollars, and then he was selling frames, so you know thirteen dollars a piece. No, sorry, fifteen dollars a piece. Yeah, I'm gonna take that, take him up on those. So I can hang those up somewhere if I can find the wall space. I've got wall space. I just, you know, I might be helping a friend out, so I don't know if I really want to make him live in my world until he gets on his feet. But. Uh, Never mind cowboys. Let's just put it that way. Um, so yeah, and as I'm finishing up my transaction with that, the uh, poetic critic is talking to uh, Mr. Jones, and you know, trying to sell him on again, like how. Oh gosh, it's gonna Disney's next movie is gonna suck. It's Solar Babies for Walt Disney adults, and like, and I just do my best to pop in there. No, it's going to be City of Lost Children for Walt Disney adults. That's my hope. I mean, I'm going to have to watch movies just to go and counterpoint the older sister, I guess. And the problem is she might not be wrong, but I just don't like her attitude, I guess, about this. I don't want to cheer on failure. I'm a Cubs fan for F's sake. Like, it's so much more fulfilling when the Cardinals are finishing just behind you, not in the cellar. You want them to at least play ball with you. Well, it reminds me, I do need to get to uh, Cubs games, I suppose. Again, uh, I will digress there. So, um, so what's up in my future? Um, again, podcasting might be a little tricky because... Yeah, I have next Sunday available, and but I have the freedom right now to, with this episode, oh, I'll do a movie episode next week on my own. Um, and then there's, um, then I can do, so I'll have the first, or not August 1st, oh, fudge. August 1st is the, first day, is a Tuesday, when um, that movie episode but i can go and bank one um on sunday the uh, tw- the uh 30th so if anybody wants to jump at that send an email to russabus07 at gmail.com that's r-u-s-s-t-h-e-b-u-s-0-7 at gmail.com offer me a movie a theme a director an actor i would prefer to focus on sub 100 minute movies but i am happy to make anything work you might have to do a marathon and uh, listen to the uh, Sam Elliott episode with Andrew T.D. Um, in regards to how that will work. So um, you could also follow me on Twitter at CatBusRuss. And, uh, of course, rate and subscribe on your favorite podcast apps. Apple is my favorite, but Spotify is who's do- I host my podcast. Um, if you do it on Apple, I will reciprocate that five-star review for one of my own. My username is the Scoop Staley there. And as I say, I'm just looking to fix the algorithm. So five-star reviews, but be as honest as you want in the critique. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, so if anything, I'm doing my best to chatter more because, again, Sam was very much like, oh, I got a lot of dead air. That's going to be a lot of editing. And, you know, I told Sam, I work 52-hour weeks. So... You know, getting rid of F-bombs, that's what I'm best at. <laughs> so, uh, but otherwise, when it comes to the future, like, as I say, I can do next Sunday. Um, 
And the Sunday after that, I can, I'm available. And then from there, it's, um, here's what's going on. Uh, Fan Expo in Chicago, Rosemont, uh, most current, if you want to be more accurate, is happening on the 10th through 13th, I believe. So that, I will be out there. So I'll probably be doing some, making some content there, um, and then the next close local uh podcast not podcast I should say is um local con I guess we'd say is Midwest Toy and Comic Fest uh that is happening at the Park Regency Hotel and Conference Center in Bloomington, Illinois and their flyer is all about promoting Reno nine one one star Carlos Alesrec Yeah God, shoot, I am so sorry. Um Carlos Aras uh Al Araski Aleza Okay. Carlos Alzwaki who aside from I believe playing yep uh Deputy Garcia on uh Reno nine one one. He is best known. And I I at least remember him best as Rocco from Rocco's Modern Life. I mean, he's done a lot of voices. Just looking at it, Mike Wanowski, one out Wazowski on the Monsters Incorporated series, the Taco Bell Chihuahua voices on Fairly Odd Parents. He was Mister Weed on the Family Guy. So, yeah, that might be something. Well, I've got a. Rocco's Funko Pop with uh, Spunky. So, yeah, that's definitely worth getting autographed. And uh, you know what? Who knows where that can go? So somebody had an autograph of the... I can't remember which store it was from, but an autographed Doc Holiday from Tombstone. By signed by Val Kilmer, and that's going for four hundred bucks. So, I'm not saying um, Carlos is going to be worth four hundred, but no, don't want to go with the cruel. Well, the cruel joke was on my mind, but hey, at least I can talk to him. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I really wish though um, for Fan Expo, really wish I could have found some prints from um, Mike Matthew Ashley. Um, that featured Keith or Sutherland or uh, Mira Sorvino. I I guess I can get my latest purchase of, um, which isn't my latest purchase, my last DVD purchase as a replacement killer signed by, um, Mira Sorvino. Um, otherwise I all on all her movies digitally, and I do need to get around to watching Mighty Aphrodite. Um, and then, uh, Kiefer Sutherland is, oh, shoot, I should have really dug through there. Surely he had some Lost Boy stuff. So that would be a cool thing, autograph to attempt to get. And, uh, of course at Fan Expo, they're going to have a Back to the Future panel, um, and a Christmas vacation panel. So could be interesting. Um, I think the panels are usually better at C2E2, but... If you get bored, there's a lot more to do in Rosemont than there is um, McCormick McCormick Place. I mean, yeah, if you want to drive around and use a lot of taxis, McCormick Place is pretty good, cool. But, um, but yeah, so that's really what's going on with the podcast. So uh, it was great to see uh, the cinema snob Brad Jones. Um, and great to see that Puri has an event like that because... Hey, the vendors weren't bad. A lot of toy stuff I think I may have actually saw. I don't know for certain if it was the um the giant uh battleship that every toy fan is looking for from G.I. Joe. Uh the USS Freedom or something like that. But um yeah, and then you know, you find out other Funko Pops that are available. I didn't know WWE won't put Bam Bam in the Hall of Fame, but he does have a Funko Pop. So, 
yeah, some of them worth hunting down. Um, so yeah, it ended up being a lot of fun and I can't wait to go and do the, uh, Urbana show. Maybe that's something I should talk to my parents about getting myself a booth so I can try promoting the podcast, sell some of my old shirts and, uh, who knows, maybe try to get some wrestling bookings on top of everything. Or maybe just sell the screenplay for what it is. Shit, five bucks a pop. It's not like I'm going to... I beat zombies versus pro wrestlers to the um, to the, to the screen with my uh, script, Main Run of the Dead. So, yeah, I had a lot of fun. This is cool. Um, just wish it wasn't so eventful at home, I guess. But it is what it is. Um, so next week, right now, the plan is to try to further catch up on Alex Accessory Shop on Etsy's Trash Feature Review. A lot of extra homework. Saw some bad movies that makes me question my own motivations as a screenwriter. But, you know, hopefully I'll work that out. Otherwise, it was also cool. I was able to stop by uh, Stacia's grave before I left. So it was cool just really kind of getting things in order. Um, you know, I believe... Or at least I want to believe that... No, I believe. She has spoken to me, I feel. Um, but it's good to have somebody you respect to look up to. You could have God. I don't believe in him. But, you know. Um, but it, I think kind of got myself straight. So, you know. Keep doing my working hard. And maybe I can move on to bigger and better things. And, you know, I hope she's doing well wherever her spirit lies. And I hope Skimble's the perfect company for her. I told her she's going to have some, like, Snow White vibes with all the animals that I think from the people's lives she's touched that have ended up crossing that rainbow bridge, dare I say. Um, yeah, she's going to have Snow White vibes, so many fur balls around her. I don't know. That's why I like to believe that the spirit survives. I don't care about heaven or hell. Because if your heaven is being... Well, I don't know. I could be smothered by cats all day. I guess I'd take it. So, Ah! This isn't about the afterlife, though. This is about the now. So, thank you for taking the time to listen to the 90 for Chill the Podcast. Um, again, love to hear from you. If you want to be on the show, russthebus07 at gmail.com or get a hold of me on Twitter or Mastodon at CatBusRuss on Twitter at RussStevens at Mastodon.social on Mastodon. So thanks for coming to you, 90 for Chill, the podcast, and may I get a wahoo. I would just like to uh, make one final note. Sorry for the uh, interruption of the outro, I suppose. Uh, uh, just the thing is that the QuadCon that will be coming to Champaign will be on February 3rd and 4th. Hence why I was thrown off by the concept. I think it was just thinking, oh, 2 3 two, four. Um, Making me think it was the 23rd, 24th. So... Uh, sorry for that confusion there, and also let me just uh, throw that reminder in that Midwest Toy and Comic Fest is coming to Bloomington, and that'll be September 30th and the 1st of October. So uh, that's all. Have yourselves a good week.